Welcome back to the channel. Lingua Francas are an important means of communication in the world today. You can talk with many more people internationally, and it sets a standard. However, one main problem, and I've experienced this in some part, is that they water down the language of countries that do not speak it natively. This includes smaller languages which might die out completely. Another is that there is an unfair advantage for some language speakers, because they can learn it easier than others. A strategy that has been used in the past is to create an entirely new language as a go-between. This was initially done via a pidgin, an example of this being Mediterranean trade between the 11th and 19th centuries. Eventually, Conlang was born. The first complete Auxlang we know of, Sol Re Sol, was invented by Francois Sudre in 1827. However, it was not very widespread and didn't attract much attention, as it was difficult to learn. After this, a new language, Volapuk, was created and a sketch was published in 1879 by Johann Martin Schleuer. The community, following disputes and the rising of more popular orc slangs, as well as various other things, died out. Finally, Esperanto, probably the most successful orc slang ever, was created and released in 1887 by Er Zamenhof, and it's the only common line currently with native speakers. I won't make a review of any languages in this video, as many have already done this, such as Helm Neasley. So, do these languages fix any of the issues we have? Do they bridge the gap between native speakers of various languages? Yes, with various success. Do they kill off minor languages, or water down cultures? No, as they are designed to be learned as a secondary language, so they don't get the chance. Do they fit their name as an international auxiliary language? No. And here's why auxlangs suck. Okay, maybe that's a little too harsh, not all auxlangs suck. Often, when they have a set goal making it easier to communicate between certain groups of peoples, they can easily complete their goal. However, the problem is when you use the word international. Often, all slangs aim to be equally easy to speak by speakers of any language. Firstly, many languages' phonologies contain sounds that many others don't. There are no phonemes that exist in every single language around the world. This already poses a struggle, as you'll have to force some speakers of languages to learn sounds that are unnatural to them. Some grammatical features might not exist in some languages, like numbers. Yes, the Munduruku and Piraha do not have numbers. Some ideas in vocabulary might or might not exist either. For example, Wanderlust, in German translating directly to desire to wander. Not a word we have in English, but really should. It describes a strong desire of wanting to explore the world. So, you probably already have an idea of how a worldwide orc slang wouldn't work. There are some things that are simply incompatible with some languages, especially those outside major family trees like Proto-Indo-European. So, how do we make a good orc slang? Firstly, you want to specify your goals. You want to have a specific number of languages in mind for this to be compatible with. Next, you create your orc slang as you would any other conlang of your own. However, you take extra time to compare various components of languages and remove some that are incompatible. For example, an English-German orc slang might not contain the sound th, or have the dative case, as it's missing from other languages. Sometimes, this preciseness will have to be sacrificed to make the language actually functional, so add in the easiest to learn option. For vocabulary, attempt to keep the number of words in each language equal, so one third Russian, one third Javanese, and one third Navajo, if those are your chosen languages, making each language's speaker learn the same amount. And finally, you can simplify the grammar, by taking away things you don't deem as necessary. Overall, focus on making the language equally easy to use for every one of your intended speakers, and you have a successful orcs slang. Choose the intended languages, even out the learning curve to be similar for every speaker, and simplify the grammar. If you are interested in finding out which language that currently exists is the worst possible language for a lingua franca, using super cool maps, epic humour, and spongebob circle pants, check out my friend Connor Quimby's collaborative video on it, which will be linked in a card at the end. But before that, go outside, take a breather, and admire the clouds. Later!